what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning all about timers so here's the app we're going to be putting together you can see that on a loop here we're not only changing the colors but then we've also used a timer to implement this cool little pulsing animation so we'll take a look at what a timer is why you should care how to use it and some of the nuances about it so that said, I've got the developer uh, page pulled up here for a timer. I'm not going to run through this entirely to bore y'all, but basically a timer lets you uh, loop different functions, blocks, and uh, it's pretty easy to set up, but pretty powerful in the things you can build and create with it. So that all said, make sure you start by absolutely destroying that like button. Make sure you absolutely destroy it so YouTube has to go back and fix it. it helps out with the video obviously quite a bit. If you're a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some timers. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We'll stick with the app template and I'm going to go ahead and call this timer example. Let's spell that correctly. Make sure your language is Swift, of course. Your lifecycle is UI kit and your interface is storyboard. Go ahead and continue. We'll throw it on our desktop. And before we get into our actual code, let's come up here and select a simulator. Uh, I think I've got the 11 Pro Max open here already. So we're going to pick that, hit the run button to get it compiled and loaded in our sim here. Let me also expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. All right, it looks like our app is up and running and we're gonna be working in the view controller file here. So let's pop into here and let me bump up this font size so everyone can see it nice and large. So cool. So uh, what is a timer? Well, the name is pretty self-explanatory. It's a way where you can schedule uh, work to be done on an interval. So a, a function to be fired or a block of code. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is first get rid of that code block and I'm going to create a function here and we're going to say uh, create timer and let's talk about how to create a timer. So you can actually create a timer in, a, in two distinct ways. The first one is by just opening up the parentheses with the class prior to it and you'll see all these constructors here. So uh, with a time interval, an invocation, a repeat, you can have a target and a selector, which is how you fire an actual uh, function from the timer. But the more uh, common way to create this is by saying timer and using one of these static uh, functions uh, to schedule the timer. And you'll notice that all of these are fairly similar. The key difference I'll call out here is, uh, in this case, we have a block, and in this case, we have a selector. Invocation is very similar to the block, but we're going to take a look at both of these. So let's actually first get started with this one here. So creating said timer, first we've got the time interval. So we're going to say two seconds. The target in which it's going to look for a function to call will be self. The selector will be the actual function itself that we want to select that, that's going to be executed. And we're going to say fire timer just like that, and we'll create that in a second. User info is uh, any optional info we wanna pass along with every single fire of this fire timer call. We'll say nil, and then repeats, we're gonna say false for now. And we'll come back and take a look at this in a moment. Let me line break everything and do control I to align it. And let's create a Objective-C exposed selector here for fire timer. And here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to say view dot background color equals system. Uh, let's go with system red. Why not? And let's see what we've got going on. All right, we've got a timer here. 
Um, and what we could actually do is we could explicitly in a delay block, we can say main uh, async after now plus three seconds. We can say timer dot fire, just like that. That warning will go away that we're not using it. Let's go ahead and hit the run button up here and let's see what happens on our simulator. So uh, our app launches um, and actually nothing is happening because I forgot to call this function. So let's put a function call here in, um, let's actually put it in view did appear rather than view did load. So go ahead and override view did appear and add that function call like so and run your app one more time. And you'll notice if we wait a few seconds that it actually does fire the function. So fairly straightforward. Let's make this a little more interesting. So we're gonna say uh, repeat here is true. I'm gonna get rid of this manual fire call. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's create an array of colors on this view controller. So this will be an array of UI colors. And let me just add a couple colors in here. Let's say system blue. Let's say, let me copy this. Let's say system red or green, I guess in that case, red, pink. What else is there? Orange, yellow. That's probably good enough for now. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is every time this function calls, we're gonna assign the background color to one of these, uh, one of these colors. And we're, we're just gonna pick a random element from this array. So let's go ahead and let me actually put an underscore here, which makes a discardable results. I'm actually not sure if we can discard it, but let's actually take a look. Looks like we can. So every single second, what's happening is, of course, the timer is scheduled, repeat is true. Every one second, we're calling this function and we're just assigning a random background color. So a really good use case of this is if you want an animation that uh, loops indefinitely, and you're not using some type of framework or library and you're just using a very basic UI view animation, you can use this timer uh, to make it loop fairly nicely. So maybe we'll actually go through that example in a moment since it's fairly straightforward. So let's talk about some other things. So notice I put discardable here, the underscore, because we're not actually using the timer in that prior example. So it was giving us a warning that we have a timer, but we're not using it. Now on the timer, we can set a property called tolerance. And this is something that not a lot of people actually know about. And it's fairly, the name is kind of confusing because when you read this, you don't really know what it means. This is a very simple concept and it's pretty powerful. So what this actually does uh, is you're telling the system, uh, when you define this timer, I need you to call my function here every second, right? But the system might be busy, right? The system might be, doing a million other things, uh, the system being iOS. So you can define in tolerance is if uh, the function call um, is 200 seconds or 200 milliseconds rather, because this is in uh, milliseconds, if this is 200 milliseconds uh, late, then that's not a problem. I won't be upset if you call my function with a, a deviation of 200. And what this does is actually, it helps reduce your app's uh, battery and energy consumption quite a bit. And the reason it does that is because you're giving the system some flexibility to execute your task um, and you're not constraining it to that very strict one second requirement. So this is okay in some cases, you can imagine if you want something to be precisely uh, timed, you don't wanna set a tolerance. And I'm fairly positive this is milliseconds, but let me just double check. So the amount of time after the scheduled timer fire day that a timer may fire. So let's just assign it to 200 and go ahead and hit command R. And you'll notice um, that it should be exactly the same. You won't really be able to tell a difference uh, of what's going on here. Uh, you'll see some of these are slightly more delayed. It's very difficult to tell. Um, the only reason some, some of them are longer in their delay is because the random element is returning the same color. So it looks like it's not changing, but that's what tolerance is all about. So let's take a look at the other constructor here, which is the one that I actually personally prefer, which is the one that looks very similar. One second, repeat is true. And in this case, we have a closure instead of a function that gets fired. It takes in a timer as a parameter, which is uh, a reference to itself. And then in here, you can execute something to do. So we are going to take that color call 
throw it in on here. One thing you want to be sure you do is make sure you say uh, weak self so you don't cause a uh, memory leak. Here we're going to say self optional. And this is uh, executed on a background thread. So we want to make sure we update anything on the UI on the main thread. So we're going to wrap that in a dispatch queue call just like that. So if you go ahead and run it, and again, we can make this discardable if I'm not mistaken, since we're not using that uh, directly. Let's take a look. So here we also want to say self uh, optional. And if it's nil, we'll just go ahead and assign it to be clear. Uh, it should never be nil, but we do need to give it a default value. And you'll see it looks fundamentally the exact same. The only difference is now you can just have your code that gets executed in line rather than having it in a separate function. A little bit of a preference call there, highly subjective. So figured I'd call that out. So let's talk about one other thing. How do you stop a looping timer? Because it's fairly easy to start it, but how the heck do you stop it? So what you can do is on a timer, you can call a function called invalidate, which again is not named perfectly well, but it basically will invalidate the timer and stop uh, the run loop for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a integer here. And every time this uh, runs, we're going to say plus uh, we'll say ran plus equals one. So we increment it with one every single time. And in here, we're going to say if ran is greater than or equal to 10, we're going to say timer dot invalidate. Now this timer refers to this timer parameter that's coming in and not uh, this timer, which obviously isn't even here. Uh, and the reason that's important is because this timer is a, I believe it's a class under the hood, so it's a reference type. So you definitely want to use that timer to call and validate um, if you're doing it in your actual execution block. So let's go ahead and run this. And actually, before I even do that, let me just throw a print statement in here so we can actually see um, what the RAN value is. So let me just say print executed timer. And we're going to say RAN just like that. And then here I'll also say timer stopped, just like that. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And let's see. So we get it logged there. You can see it's getting logged every single time it's running. And it should stop fairly soon. There it goes. Timer stopped, no longer updating. And that's basically it. That's how you can use a timer to go about uh, changing things uh, in a loop. And that's also how you stop it. So I mentioned the animation bit earlier on. So for example, instead of changing the color like this, if we actually go ahead and comment all of this good stuff out, let me uncomment, uh, rather comment that out, get rid of this ran. Let's say hypothetically we had a, uh, let's say uh, var uh, is animated by default is false. Let's say we had a simple view, which is a UI view with a frame of, uh, I don't know, 0, 0, 200, and 200. Let's go ahead and add this as a sub view to our view. And let's go ahead and center it. And finally, let me add a background color to it so we can actually see it. We'll say it's link. Every time this timer executes, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to say, uh, if this is animated, uh, if it is animated, we're going to change it. Otherwise, we're going to change it uh, again. So here, what we're going to go ahead and do is say is animated equals uh, false. And in this case, is animated equals, we're going to say true. Let me change the interval here to be three seconds or two seconds rather. And what I'll do is we're going to say UI view animate with duration. We'll say one second and animations is a block. And in here we can say my view dot frame uh, equals CG rects. Let's just say like, I don't know, 30, 30, 200, and 200. Actually, what I can do is be lazy and copy and paste this since it's always easier. Let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. And I'm just going to actually change the, um, what I want is actually the frame. Let me find the frame. There it is. We're just going to animate the frame every single time. So we're going to say my view dot frame equals that. And we're just going to enlarge this to be 400 by 400. And once it's done, 
uh, we're going to say uh, it's centered. And then in this case, we're going to say, once again, it goes back to 200 by 200. And because this uh, self optional on the view is, uh, is going to be optional, we, what we should do here is uh, unwrap the weak self. So we're going to say guard let strong self is self. And we're going to return here. And now we can use this strong self instead of self optional like that and like that. So go ahead and run. Um, I'll walk through that code in a second, but what you'll notice now is hopefully there it goes. So it enlarges and then it decreases. Um, the timing looks weird. And the reason is, is let's make this uh, every three seconds it fires. Uh, and by default, let me actually manually fire the timer just once. And the way you actually do that is by saying uh, timer dot fire, just like that. And let's see. So it's going to fire. It's going to take one and one second to animate, and then it's going to fire again afterwards. Um, and we should also wrap this in an animation block, which looks like I forgot to do. Just like that. And we should be good to go now. So let's try that. Let's do Command R. You'll notice that it's going to enlarge, hopefully, like that. And then in two seconds, it'll uh, animate down again. So you can make really cool uh, effects with this. Um, in this case, this is kind of pulsing if I would make it a little faster. Um, timers, the point, the takeaway here is are super simple to use, but they're incredibly powerful in what you can do with them. So that's basically it. That's all I've got for you guys. So if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below, as always, for the YouTube algorithm, for video engagement, all that good stuff. Comment any questions, video suggestions, feedback. I love hearing from y'all all the time. I try to reply as uh, quickly as I can to every comment. Um, also helps out with video engagement, obviously. Let's YouTube know that you guys are interacting with the video, that you like it, that it's of value. Um, and of course, most importantly, make sure to also hit subscribe uh, to follow along with these daily Swift uploads. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.